here we are. Welcome to day 13 of Game Beyond the Game presents Talk That Talk, your 21-day transition. I am your host, Stan Pearson II, where I look to navigate these conversations with professional athletes and helping you find your game beyond the game. Hey. All right, and I happen to be here with Prince Daniels Jr., but before I bring him on, I just want to let you all know that this is a pre-recording. We're generally here with you live, but hey, we're not taking a break, but we just want to make sure you all know that you are here with us in spirit right now. And as you watch this, I want you to enjoy this just as if it were live, okay? So now I bring to you all the founder of Game Beyond the Game, Prince Daniel Jr. Prince, how you doing? Man, I'm, I'm blessed. I always say that because I really am. And I'm blessed to be able to listen to other athletes' um, story and listen to how they inspire other people so other people can inspire towards their greatness and their goals. So I'm thankful, uh, looking to help out every individual, but starting with athletes in the world by sharing our story and giving them some words of wisdom about life. Awesome, thank you very much. And today we have an amazing guest. We're glad you took the time to spend with us today. We have Mr. DeVar Darling, who is a former wide receiver for the NFL after playing college football at Florida State University and Washington State. He was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens and went on to play for the Kansas City Chiefs and Houston Texans. He overcame the personal tragedy of the sudden passing of his identical twin brother, Devon, on the football field during spring practices in 2001 at FSU. He has now devoted his life and to help underprivileged youth achieve their potential doing community outreach in Houston and the Bahamas. Because of the personal tragedy of losing his twin brother, Darling is a spokesperson for Operation Hydration, an educational program and seminar for high school and college athletic coaches, players, and parents raising awareness and educating them on the dangers of dehydration, sickle cell trait, and intense physical activity. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome DeVar Darling. With clap your hands, stomp your feet. That's what I'm talking. Put your hands together for yourself. You're doing a lot out there. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, have me on. You know, uh, BJ Prince, man. I, I appreciate all all the love, man. And Stan is great uh, getting to meet you, and and uh, just appreciate the opportunity. And uh, you know, wouldn't be here without um, Lord Jesus Christ, man. Going through all everything I've been through in life, and standing here right here, so. Um, you know, definitely got to give praise and thanks, especially during these crazy times, you know? Right. Heck yeah. Man, thank you for, you know, saying that and certainly, you know, the well wishes and then also acknowledging, obviously, these crazy times and you've certainly had some crazy, bizarre, uh, you know, tragedies yourself that you've fought through quite a bit of adversity. So let's, if you don't mind, can we jump right to that? You know, what have, what have been some things that you've overcome uh, that people don't always know? Well, <clears throat> like you said, yeah, like you said before, passing my identical twin brother, you know, was the biggest blow of my life, you know? Um, being two young boys from the Bahamas, growing up just having a dream and the goal of, of uh, playing American football and getting the chance to move to Houston, Texas uh, <clears throat> in middle school, and, um, you know, represent that H-Town, uh, Sugar Land. You know, I see you over there, PJ. <laughs> West, that West, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know we, we, you know, football became life right away for us, man. You know, um, we, we knew at a young age that we were determined to, to take it to that next level. You know, uh, um, seeing my mother work hard, you know, single mother raising five kids and all that stuff, uh, you know, that whole story. But <clears throat> going on to, for, to Florida State, you know, being true freshman, uh, playing as true freshman at Florida State at the year 2000, you know, we one step away from our, our main goal, and that's making it to the NFL. So Florida State represented everything to us at that time, man. It was the end of the Bobby Bowden era. It was like, shoot, 2000. It was in the midst of it. You know, we playing for a legendary coach, teammates. I don't know how many NFL, future NFL, you know, uh, uh, prospects we played with and, and, and shared our blood, sweat, and tears with over there, man. It was, it was everything we wanted, wanted at the time. And, and uh, February 20, 26, 2001 was 
it was just a, a whole, I mean, I, I can't imagine, I mean, I, I lived it, but never imagined that I would be here today without my twin brother, man. And, and um, you know, losing him that way, especially doing something that we love, working out, working hard, you know, um, under those circumstances, it was crazy, man. So uh, definitely got through it uh, by, by going back to my roots. And that's, and that's, that's the Bible, the Lord. You know, uh, my grandfather was a Baptist preacher for years in the Bahamas, over 60 odd years in the Bahamas. Um, my mother, a real strong Christian woman, Lord rest us, so she just passed away uh, three I'm months ago. For your loss, man. Um, uh, same day as Kobe, yeah, January 26th, man. So it's been, like I said, I had to lean, go back to that again. You know, it's, that's the only way I know how to get through. And, um, you know, uh, it led to me being here right now, you know, and that's just keeping the faith, knowing that the, the Lord has an ultimate plan for me, no matter how hard or how tough it gets, man. Uh, just keeping that faith and that, that strength in, in him and, and his word, that's what gets me through every, every day. Now, if you don't mind me asking, you know, you know, obviously transition being a theme and you have experienced tremendous transitions for a number of reasons. You know, that, you know, in mentioning your brother and what you experienced at FSU, you know, what made you push forward? You know, that could have also been a time we decided, you know what, I'm good. You know, what made you lean in the other direction? Oh, man, it was truly going back to our, our dreams and our goals. As, as young boys, I remember uh, eighth grade, uh, we lost every game in middle school, man. And me and my twin brother, we cried after every game, you know. And, um, you know, but that year going into – before going into high school, we truly, truly sat down. It was like, you know, this is not ever going to happen again. This is what we want to do. We are going to work hard and do whatever we need to do to get to that next level and get better. And at 13 years old, man, we wrote down goals and we put it above our bed. And we read our goals every night and every morning. Slept in the same bed, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. we read our goals every night, every morning. Uh, we have a Bible verse above it, and then we all write, have our goals down on the post board academically and what we want to do in sports. And, uh, and that, was the, that was the basis of it, man. That was the start. No one had to tell us to do it. We just, it was something we wanted to do. And I remember our friends, man, we, were, we had a crew of friends, man. They were walking in our room, and they would look up at our goals, man. They started laughing. Dying. <laughs> really? Oh man. In, your, in your face, oh, not even yeah. in your yeah. face. I ain't laughing at this, man. Yo, what y'all doing? Y'all can you know? By 10th grade, every single one of them dudes had their goals up above them. <laughs> <laughs> every single one of them dudes had their goals up above their bed, man. And, I would, and truly, you know, at that time, man, I said, yeah, I was being questioned. You know, they were saying, hey, these... You know, it was a heart condition that they have, a, a family heart condition. I had to get poked and prodded by all kinds of cardiologists, see this, uh, this doctor and that doctor. You know, uh, you know, Florida State didn't want me to play football there anymore. Uh, it was so much I had to go through, man, and, and transferring and getting recruited all over again, ending up signing up at Washington State, which was a blessing. You know, and still had to fight to get cleared. It was, <laughs> it was a road, man. <laughs> but every day, truly, it was keeping my mind focused on getting back on the field. You know, um, uh, getting to that next level, having making it to the NFL to fulfill that dream and goal that you know that me and my twin brother had. And I, I didn't want his um, his legacy and his name and our dreams to go to to go to waste, you know, I, I, I had to, had to make it happen. So that was just a, a driving force for me. It was just the goals that we wrote down as two young boys, 13 years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the power of words. No, please, Prince, what do you have? No, no, go ahead. You want to say the power of words or what? No, you know, the power of words, speaking things into existence, it's not a myth. And then it, you also remind me of like, you become it or it becomes you. 
Mm. And when you mention, you know, writing your quotes up and have the scriptures and your friends coming in the room and then laughing, and that's literally a perfect example of you become it or it be they became a part of you all right. because right. of your consistency and in, in living into what you wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, I, wanted amazing. To, I wanted Prince, to jump please. in and say, so Stan, it was pretty cool because uh, Devard and I, we're, we're, we're both from Houston, Texas. Um, so we, we grew up there. And so that's where we, we, we built the name for ourselves. And, um, and I remember in high school, you would always hear about the, uh, the Darling Twins. And it's just like, what? <laughs> you know, because, and then, the, so the only time, so we, we live in different districts. So the only time I would ever see them was like during track, track season. Because that's when you yep. usually see everybody, you know. And, <laughs> yep. and so, it was the, uh, you know, everyone's just like, they go to Darling Twins. And it's like, man, I guess yeah, they're cool. I <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and so um, you know to 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 see them grow, and then saw the tragedy, and then saw Devar, and then had a chance to to meet him in uh, in Baltimore. It's just like a, it's almost like a dream come true. It's just like, oh, we used to they used to always talk about us, you know, in the news, <laughs> you know. So like I thought that was super awesome, man, and and just kind of brings me back to like my my question, like. Um, like how how did you get exposed to football um, coming from the Bahamas? You know, like what, was that something that y'all used to watch when y'all were there when y'all were when y'all were younger? Or you, I mean, tons of Bahamian uh, football fans in the Bahamas, man. Tons of them, you know, diehard football fans. My father was a diehard Miami Dolphins fan. You <laughs> yeah. know, so, yeah, it started from watching Dan Marino, uh, you know, Mark Clayton, Dupa, all them eighties. You know what I'm saying? That that's where it all started, and then going outside the yard and throwing the ball around, you know, uh, and and just messing around. But we didn't didn't fully get exposed until we moved to Houston. Mm. You know, uh, and, uh, I have um, my older cousin. He's like my my uncle, my father figure. His name is Frank Rutherford. He was the first Bahamian to win an Olympic medal in 1992 in track and field. First oh. one to do. It. Wow. The loops. And, <laughs> yeah, man. So, you know, he's a four time Olympian. My older brother is a three time Olympian, ran for the Bahamas as well, four by four. And, you know, me and Navon was coming up behind that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> running, the, running the sand, running the beach with them, seeing that. So, seeing my older cousin, the ment he taught us to be the mentality of being a pro. You know, mm. and I remember getting to Houston, seventh grade, and he he sat down with me, and my my twin brother. And he said, "If y'all want to go to the NFL, this guy it was a booklet. It was a Mel Kiper booklet. He slapped it down in front of our face. Back then, there was no internet. This was like '95. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just coming around. So it was a Mel Kiper used to come out with these booklets. You know, Mel Kiper Jr." So he would come out with these booklets with every NFL prospect, collegiate prospect, NFL prospect, got the height, weight, the, the 40 times, all that stuff. And he was like, this man got to know your name if y'all want to get to the NFL. Hey. <laughs> we sat down, we looked at that book, we would study it, we would, you know, 40 times this, that. He was a big historian, he just, you know, like you said, he... He was a pro's pro, and he showed us how to how to be that. He was like, "You have to be a student of the game. You got to know. You got to love it." You know, so that's um, that's truly how we how we got interested in in football, man. It started from you know watching the the Dolphins on on, on my daddy's couch and <laughs> in the Bahamas, and then uh, you know training, running track, and getting to Houston and 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 making it happen from there, man. You nice. know, like I said. Agreed. We had them goals up above our bed, brother. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. connection is 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 amazing, and it's it becomes even more powerful because you've you've also uh, created some other brothers, mm -hmm. right? You have some sons, uh, from what I understand, right? And and what's that like? You know, being a father to sons, and what kind of things? What Mel Kiper Jr. booklet conversations are you having? <laughs> you know, with them. You know, you know, or metaphorically speaking, uh, uh, no, that's you know, it, it's truly a, it's a mental game. 
Uh, and that's, that's what I, I try to preach to these boys. You know, they see, you know, of course, like every young kid, they see, you know, Lamar Jackson, they see Patrick Mahomes, they see him just balling out there, you know? Yeah. Um, this is the thing you don't see is this. You sure what I'm saying? The hard work that goes into it. And that's what, uh, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to them every day. And then the mentality of being a, a professional athlete, that's what my, my cousin Frank uh, taught, you know, me and my brothers. Uh, and from Frank to Dennis down to me and Devon, uh, you know, and that's what I'm going to pass down to them. And those, those words of wisdom and those gems, it's all in, in the mentality, man. So is a man thinking. So is he. So is he. You know, so he, you know, you got to, it starts all up here, man. It starts up here. So what, what advice would you give to players now? that may be, you know, approaching their transition, or maybe they're in the thick of it. You know, right. what, what advice, what might you say, you know, to them as they're approaching different transitions? Oh, man, it's the little things. Little things that, that, that build up to the big things that matters, man. Do the little things that matter, you, you know. Uh, yeah, getting up, you know, being disciplined, you know, getting the mental focus, you get your prayer life in order. <laughs> You know, you get, you get the mentality in order, you get the spirituality in order. Every every step of your, every aspect of your life, man, get it in order so, you know, you can go out there and, and, and perform. Because once you get to that top level, man, the NFL, and even, you know, it goes up every every step, the pressure behind you when you finally, you know, being a pro athlete, even though in college, you, you know, <laughs> you're a pro. You're pretty, pro <laughs> you Pre-pro, know? yeah. It, it goes, it, the pressure gets, gets, gets thicker. And at that top level, what people don't see and don't realize is those pressures that come every single day, you know, being able to compete every day, you know, trying to prove to yourself, your teammates, these coaches, everything, you know, to get on the field, to perform, you know, you know it's, it's, it's tough at times, man. That pressure can be heavy, heavy, heavy. And, you know, um, and you got to do it at a young age, man. You know, 21, 22, some guys come in at 20. It's, it's, a, lot to, it's a lot to carry, you know, if, uh, if you're not, you know, prepared for it mentally. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to ask one quick question now. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You may have not even thought about this before, but personally, what are you most proud of? Like to this moment, what are you most proud of? Uh, most proud of? Man. Yeah, I, you, you're right, man. <laughs> I really thought about <laughs> I haven't it. thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, man. You got a lot to be proud of, man. Yeah, yeah. I do. I, I am, I am ex extremely blessed, man. I, 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 I truly believe that, and I know that I am extremely blessed, even though I've been through uh, so much tragedy, and sometimes I feel like I live two, three lifetimes already, you know, <laughs> but um, I am extremely blessed, man. The Lord has blessed me so much with my beautiful sons, man. I, I, I got to tell you, man, just watching them every day, Devar Jr., Devon II, and young Devin, oh, you know, man. Man, they, are, they are truly a blessing to me, and I'm, I am very proud of them, man, and who they are, and the young men that they're becoming, um, and that they will be. And so I, I, I truly, I, you know, I'm proud of that, you know, and then, you know, as, as life comes, man, it, it, it's, it's about how you adjust to the changes in life, man. It's truly how do you, how you adapt and move on. And, uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I, like I said, I've been, I feel like I've been through, I know I've been through a lot and uh, to still be here standing blessed and, and, and with a smile on your face. You know, it's, it's, um, I, I, that's something I feel I can be proud of. You know, I, I didn't give oh. up, I didn't give up, you know, so, uh, just to be here right now, man, talking to y'all, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing to me. You know, I, I truly am grateful for every day. Man, Thank you so awesome. much. Prince, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were yeah. you going to say? So one, I, I, I did get a chance to ask Jerome Sapp this question. I asked him, um, so with, with, with your boys, um, I'm assuming that you haven't been sports. Mm -hmm. So have you ever had one of those moments where you, you, you told your son something to make an adjustment and he went out and did it 
and it was like he scored a touchdown or or he scored a basket or he did something and you know it made you proud like what, were you trying to contain yourself or were you like that, that's my boy right there no nah, no nah, i'm on the side <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> you know, I you know hey, I, I'm running with him on the side. <laughs> yeah, that feeling is uh, is amazing. I'm telling you, man, that's uh, truly an amazing feeling to 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 watch them, man. And, and like you said, you, yeah, it's because that's you. That's part of you out there. You yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, truly, truly, an amazing feeling to see that. Man, that was, that's awesome. Um, you were to pass tomorrow, mm -hmm. and um, you had to sit your boys down um, and, and give them uh, some advice. What would you give them? What would you say to them? Uh, I, would, I would tell them, man, just like what I, I told you, you got to stick, stick in that word. Stick to, to knowing who you are. You are blessed. You are heir to his throne, child of God. And I tell them this all the time, you know, uh, you know, you're a leader and you're a champion, you know, y'all are blessed and highly favored, you know, never forget that y'all are black and beautiful, y'all, uh, y'all, I tell them every day, man, they are strong and, 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 you know, to be leaders and champions, that's, that's my number one thing I say to them all the time, you know, so, you know, that, from that, uh, you know, I, I pray that they can find their self-worth and know who they are and we'll be able to fight through anything that comes along in life. So that's know. beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, the day before your bro your brother passed, mm -hmm. what advice would you have given him, or what advice would you want him to have given you? Uh, I mean, the advice that I guess he would want to give me is is I he was my biggest fan. You know what I'm saying? We were each other's biggest fans. Uh, you know, Ron was, he was the number one linebacker in the state of Texas our, our, our senior year in 2099, 2000 year. You know, he was, you know, all first team, all state and state of Texas, all that, you know, uh, he was ranked like the ninth top 10 linebacker in the country that year. He was a blue chipper, all that. And I was kind of the forgotten guy. You know, it wasn't forgotten, but you know, we had Roy Williams come out that year, B.J. Johnson and Sloan Thomas. Three freshmen went to Texas that year, you yeah. know, <laughs> and started as true freshmen. First time ever happening. <laughs> I, I came up behind. So, you know, it was I always felt like I was kind of overlooked. But that dude was my number one fan, man. And, you know, I, always, I, I heard his voice all the time and still hear his voice all the time. You got this, man. You got this, you know? So, you know, you know, he, he gives me advice still, you know what I'm saying? I still hear his voice and I still hear him cheering me on every every day. So that was, you know, I I I pray that I'm I'm making him proud every day that I'm living for him, you know. So yeah. his name and his legacy a lot through through the Eyes One Foundation and everything that we do. So Yeah. Yep. No. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel I'm pray, praying every day that I'm doing exactly what he, he would want me to do. That's you know? awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, I just want to say you're doing it, bro. So what kind of advice would you give to someone that experienced a life tragedy or loss in their lives, man? Um, like I said, that when you when you grieving like that, man, grief is, is you know, you go through every emotion. You know what I'm saying? The one thing I would say, sometimes people try to cut that off and don't and try to cut off that pain sometimes you have to go through that pain you know to 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 get to the other side truly get to the other side you can't can't truly get to the other side unless you allow yourself to feel that man you know so if you feel like crying cry if you want to laugh laugh and, you know there's, there's no rules to it when it when you're grieving and you're going through that man everyone does it differently but at some point, you have to allow yourself to, to feel it. I, I truly believe that you have to allow yourself to feel that pain and, and know that you're strong enough to push through it. And once you get through it, once you realize that sun's still coming up the next day, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That time's still moving on. And when you're at that fork in the road of, am I going to sit here and wallow or 
no, go this way and you can either go be depressed or you can get up and use it as fuel, you know? So you got to allow yourself to feel that and go through it and, um, and get yourself up, find your strength and know that it's going to get better every day. You know, it's a process and, and pick up your lunch pill and, and go. Man. <clears throat> Yeah. My dog. I'm <laughs> dog yeah, hey, man. man. Hey, Devo, I just want to let you know, man. I still be working out, dog. So if you need anything, man, you let me know, bro. You let me know. I got you, baby. I got your back, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate Always, that. man. Always, man. Respect. I just want to let you know that, bro. Appreciate yeah, it, man. Devar, thank you so very much for uh, taking the time to spend with us and, and sharing your, your life, your loves. Uh, your transparency and all the things you've overcome have helped us be a little bit better today uh, than we were yesterday. In addition to, you know, those folks uh, who are watching this or may find themselves listening to it. Do you have any final words or how can someone learn more about you? Um, you can always check out my foundation. I always got to plug in the foundation. I love it. Org. You know, we uh, recently switched things up. We are, you know, focusing on, on education empowering families uh, through education and, and sickle cell education, pretty much comprehensive sickle cell education. My twin brother passed away. We have the sickle cell trait. He was severely dehydrated and everything else, you know, um, his blood, blood cells were sickling. And, and you, can, you can find out a lot more information, you know, on asonefoundation.org. That's A-S-O-N-E foundation.org. And, you know, and, and we just want to empower people, educate people, and, and it can truly help save lives. If my twin brother would have had a water break, he would still be here. You know, that's, that's, that's true, true talk, real talk, you know. So, you know, those little things about knowing yourself, knowing your body, like I said, it's, it's, it's key to life, man. So as one foundation.org, you can definitely go check that out. And, um, you know, I, I, my number one goal is, you know, bless me so I can bless others, man. And truly, you know, I believe each and every one of us are uh, blessings in itself. And, and, and we all have a story to tell, you know, and, uh, and can help and share with someone else. So, you know, that's what it's all about, man. Man, yeah. I appreciate you so much again. We look forward to, you know, doing this or hanging out at some point. Y'all make me wish I was from Houston to Bahamas. Or something. Y'all got all connected. Whatever, man. Whatever. When all this, whatever. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Thank you all for, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with Prince Devard and I, and we'll continue to do so. So make sure to continue to join us as we continue to teach others and show others how to find and develop their game beyond the game. Hey. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. <laughs>